Hey everybody, this is Tolgame Junkie, I want to welcome you all back to my channel. So before this video begins, I want to thank everyone for helping me get to 10,000 subscribers, truly, I appreciate, appreciate you all, and without you, my channel wouldn't be as big as it is, and for that I am truly grateful, and I will continue to bring you Life is Strange content, as that's basically what my channel is, it's a Life is Strange channel, that it may have started off with just random bits of gameplay, but at the end of the day, it's a Life is Strange channel. So, a few hours ago, TikTok, not just TikTok actually, because I do check TikTok every time I wake up. So TikTok, Instagram, and the Life is Strange YouTube channel showed this new trailer of Cold On University, and we got some interesting stuff. I made a post about it a while ago, as I couldn't upload the video at the time, but I'm back, I'm here to make this video, and we're going to be going over this scene by scene, and I hope you all enjoy this video. And let's be clear, there will obviously be stuff that I end up missing, so I will be making little videos about the stuff I missed um, when I don't see it first off in this video, because there's a lot to go over. So let's get started. In the first few screenshots, we get a shot of Colden University, and we learn it's, a sci it's an arts and science college based in Vermont, which we already knew. So nothing too, at least to me, there's nothing too interesting here, but we do learn a bit about Sophie's mother in the next shot. Now we already know she was the president of Colden University, but what we didn't know was that she was the first female president. My apologies, is the first female president, not was. Now here we have two shots, we see a magazine about Yasmin, and we see in the left that this is the original timeline due to the blue moon underneath the look icon. In the next shot, we see Max hugging this woman who's called Gwen. I figure out, well, you can figure out her name in the 18 minute gameplay where uh, the developer showed off Max, and it's when she takes a picture of Moses and her phone opens. You can see a list of contacts and you see Gwen's face and the name next to the face, so we know this is Gwen. And later in the trailer, we find out she's a professor. I thought she was a professor, but um, there was no, like, it wasn't said outright, but it does mention it later in the trailer, which I'll get to. Now, this next shot isn't that interesting. We see what appears to be a library with some students studying. Uh, whether or not these will be people we can talk to, or if they're just NPCs, I don't know. But the next shot is quite interesting. And that is of Amanda and Max w talking, walking side by side. Now, I believe that this scene takes place shortly after Sophie's death, or shortly after Max opens the new timeline. And so she and Amanda are just talking, and you can tell by the clothes she's wearing, because if you look at um, what she wears at the Shattered Turtle Bar, um, we know that the clothes she wears are completely different here. As you can see from these other screenshots, Amanda has that same coloured coat on that she's wearing when she's walking with Max, as opposed to the clothes she's wearing in the Shattered Turtle when she talks to Max. So, whether or not Mac, when Max and Amanda are walking and talking, whether they've gone on a date or not, or it's just a friendly stroll, that's up for interpretation. But uh, with the way that the the marketing is seemingly pushing Amanda and Max together, it's probably a date. Now this next shot we have is a dark room, as I've mentioned before what a dark room is. Not the dark room from the first Life is Strange, but a place where photographs can be developed and that it's it's a long it's not that complicated to explain but I'm not gonna explain it here it's you can just quickly google it up but what's interesting is we see Max sneaking down so she may have broken into someone's place and is looking for information or possibly this could be her place and someone is broken in and she's being careful and sneaking in is like sneaking down it's like okay is someone broke into my place who is it what's happening now regardless of whether or not this place is Max's I can say with 100% certainty Moses is with her in this scene now whether or not he ends up coming down the stairs and sees her or the two of them are together because we see that Max looks at the computer 
and Max is confused as to what she's seeing, but Moses looks generally shocked at what he's seeing, and we see him at the stairs, and Max goes to approach him, and he tells her to back off, but maybe this could be reversed, maybe Moses ends up discovering Max at, uh, maybe it's a stair scene, where Max goes to approach Moses after he finds her down here, down in this dark room, and he tells her to back off, and she's like, no, you need to listen to me, and then the two of them go over to the laptop, and that's when Max looks confused and Moses looks generally shocked. Could this be photos of victims in the dark room? We know from the ESRB rating that that one of the things that's going to be featured is photographs of women fully clothed, and the photographs are going to be black and white. So, is it possible? Could they be old photos from Mark Jefferson's dark room? or new photos from someone trying to imitate him, a copycat, if you will. On that, I do not know, we'll just have to wait and see. Now the next scene we can tell this is in the new timeline as there is a red moon underneath the look button, and we see what appears to be mysterious footprints. Now what this could be, I have an idea, but we'll bring that up later in the video. So let's go to the next part, which uh, is very interesting, and spoilers, if you haven't seen my post, this might end up spoiling who may have killed Sophie, or who could have been involved in her death. Now in this next scene, we see Max on the phone, and she's talking to someone, and if you zoom up on the name, it says Maria. Then Max ends up dropping her phone out of shock. And then we see her turn around, and it's like she's looking for someone, but someone has disappeared. Now, if you noticed on the left, it was it says when the uh, person was talking in this new trailer, uh, they say the word supernatural occurrences, then no, like sarcastically, at least that's the way I interpreted it, because one of the leaks for the person that it was responsible for Sophie's death the leaks say that this person had powers. And so, th could this person have powers like Tristan from the comics? And for those of you who haven't read the comics, Tristan was a character that was introduced in the second volume, issue 5 I believe he was. And uh, what his power was, he could just fade, he could still exist, but he could make people not see or hear him. But Max could see and hear him because of her ability to rewind time. And he could take stuff, and it would disappear. Like, say, whenever he had to eat, he'd just grab a candy bar, and whatever he touched turned invisible. Similar to how Max's new power in this, she'll be able to bring stuff from alternate timelines with her. Like, she could go to one timeline, take something, then go to the other timeline. Or she could bring something in from an alternate timeline while still staying in her one. Or, this person Maria, could be watching Max from a distance, and she's called Max, and she's possibly threatening her, it's like this to say, drop it, don't, don't, in, don't investigate anymore. Similar to how Nathan Prescott would send those messages to Max, it's like keep your smart mouth shut about everything, or else you could have that type of situation. Although, why wouldn't the phone call have anonymous or unknown rather than Maria's name? So it's it's probably not true, but. I do want to bring up a post that was um, made a few weeks ago by Nihilus Stylist on Reddit, and this person pointed out that when Sophie gets a phone call, this is before she leaves the roof, you remember she introduces her, herself in her full name, she goes, yes, this is Sophie, I'm not even going to try to pronounce her full name, so after she introduces herself, he noticed that if you zoom in, the name, it, he said, it might be Maria, and we see on the phone call here that where the person Max is on the phone to is Maria. So, could whoever this Maria is, could she be a new person instead? Could she... So, she could either be the killer or, or had a hand in Sophie's death and there could be more than one killer. Now, take this with a big grain of salt. I am not confirming nor denying this. I'm just here to give you the facts, give you the theories, the information... Take, take with it what you will, but if it is, then holy shit, we, we have our killer. I'll be, I'll be keeping an eye on this Maria. Now, who she is, I don't know, but I have an idea of what character she may be. But we'll get into that later. 
Now there is another reason Max could be looking shocked, and this could be when she first gets her gets her powers, when they first her new powers start surfacing. Now we know that we see from the trailer Max starts hearing Sophie's voice when everyone's grieving, and she sees a silhouette of her, and then she ends up opening. Um, she ends up traveling to an alternate timeline well she creates an alternate timeline and she hops into that like how however it works she shifts between it between them uh this could be right here because we know this is where Sophie's dead so this could be max is just hearing Sophie's voice when she was on the phone to maria and that's why she drops her phone she shocks like what's going on and then she probably says to herself ah oh, max pull it together Sophie's dead you, you're just hearing things and then she starts hearing Sophie's voice again later on. It's like, I'm not crazy. I am hearing her voice. What is happening? And then she sees the silhouette of Sophie in the alternate timeline and then opens it or creates the alternate timeline, however it works. Because as you can clearly see, Max is still wearing the same outfit she had on in the trailer when she opens the, when she creates the parallel timeline or alternate timeline. Yeah, let's, let's just stick with parallel timeline. I'm stuck calling it that. In the next few scenes, we get a look at what's known as the Fine Arts Building, a church that was repurposed into an art gallery. And this immediately, when I saw the scenes, reminded me of San Francisco's art gallery in episode 5, and how Max could look around and look around at the various artworks. And I do think they're going to try and bring that to this. And one of the interesting things that I also noticed was um, in one of the scenes you can see that there's artwork and it looks very similar like we've seen it before. Now this is the first time we've seen the artwork but it looks very familiar, it looks like a whale. And I immediately thought, okay, this is the, a reference to the two whales diner. And you can see the little plaque next to the frame. This is... It says Max Caulfield. It's a bit hard to see, but I immediately knew this was her work. And that's when I realized, wait, does Max have more than one photograph in this um, in this museum? And I went and looked back, and it's true. She, I think she has a whole gallery to her, because look at these images here. Well, not a whole gallery, but she has a section for her work. Now, this was discovered about a month back. I made a video on it. And we see Max Caulfield and we get a little bio about her, how she, a biography basically, how she took photos, what she did with, um, like how she grew up, how she came to love photography. And we see right next to the plaque there's a photo which is hers. And then, this was actually in the reveal trailer when they were showing off this museum. You can see this image here and again, I believe this is another one of Max's photos. It's hard to see, harder to see the plaque than the previous one, but yes, that is definitely Max's work right here. And if you take the three pictures and you put them together, you'll see that they're all Polaroids. The one with the whale, it looks like maybe a bit of it's cut out and Max has kind of put it together, or maybe she's folded the edges together and kind of made it into one, you know, I'm not too sure about that one, but they're basically all Polaroid pics, and that's what Max does. She uses a Polaroid camera. Well, in this one, she uses a digital camera, but, you know, in the first game, she used Polaroid ca camera, and her, this was her signature, the instant photography. Like, that was her collectible thing, I mean, not signature tray. It was, um, when you find collectible, she takes a picture, and we get it. Now, the next shot isn't, like, too much to get talk too much to talk about, really. It's just we see there's a moon different colors which is maybe a hint at a, or a reference to what's going to happen in the game because as you know life is strange likes to use a lot of symbolism in the game so maybe it could be something more or it could be nothing but i don't really have much to talk about in this scene in this next scene we see that max gets the option to get tea or coffee and this is in her original timeline and we can, uh, w one of the things that's interesting is that the game kind of, it's showing us that we can do these extra activities while exploring the world. So if you remember in True Colors, there were lots of things you could do, such as, well, not lots of things, but there were a lot more things you could do, such as play, play those arcade games. Like, you could spend, like, what, maybe half an hour or an hour, however skilled you are, beating all the high scores on the arcade machines 
across Haven Springs if you if you so wanted to. And so I think it's cool that they give us the add these little bits to bring the world to life because you know it's always the little details that can have a bigger impact in the game. Like you, you don't need it, but it's nice to know the developers put something like that there. We then see Max get her coffee or her tea. There's a picture of uh, trees and a star in the background, obviously artwork. Uh, I'm not too sure where it is, but I recognize this place immediately as well. And I'm just going to show you the other scenes before I get into that. But in this scene here, we see, like in the other games, Max can find a quiet spot to sit, and she can reflect on what a current event, current events, like what's happening in what part of the story. And I honestly thought these were photos here, uh, but no, they're actually bricks, and I feel foolish for not realizing that earlier until now. But after this scene, we get a wide shot and we get to look around the museum a bit more. And if you remember, and if you've um, watched the previous trailer before with Max and Moses, I'm sorry, the reveal stream trailer, my mistake. Um, you'll notice that when Max, in a few scenes with Max and Moses, they're in the church. Now, well, the former church, now museum. And we know that in an earlier scene where Max and Moses are outside, Max begins explaining her powers to Moses. And now she can shift from timelines. Uh, now, I think this scene right here is shortly after the two get to talking. And because of the... The developers have stated, sorry about that tongue tie there, uh, the developers have stated that Max has the option to tell Moses about her powers, and Moses, with his background, he can come up with a reason as to why Max's powers have changed. And honestly, one of the things I don't want is to, for them to explain where powers come from, because we know that, like, at least what we've shown, what we've seen, is that a person's powers is that they get their power their powers are based off that person's personality and they get their powers through a traumatic event but i don't want to know if it's like if it's a genetic mutation if it's a freak of nature type thing like i don't want to know that it's just it just happens i don't think we need to delve deep into that but I'm interested to hear what uh, Moses believes could be the reason for Max's change of powers. I think it could be her trauma from what whatever your choice was in Arcadia Bay. So her powers, like, due to her trauma, altered. Because she can still do the same things, just different. Right? Like, you know, she can... Like, well, I don't knock... I made a video about this previously, I'll link it below. But she can basically do the same stuff that she could with her rewind powers just differently. Now we get a nice shot at what is the Everett Observatory and we get a look inside it as well and it's a and we and it's also a planetary. Planetarium, sorry, my mistake. It's an observatory and a planetarium. And I like these places. I've been, I went to one when I was a kid. I loved it. And I'm looking forward, this is one of the areas I'm really looking forward to exploring out of all the places. I do want to see, like, everything the game has to offer, but this is something I'm very interested in. Now this next shot here, what you see with the chairs and the posters and all that, that doesn't interest me. What interests me is on the far right, and you can see a staircase. Now we've seen that before in the reveal trailer. I'm sorry, the reveal stream. And one of those scenes is early on in the reveal stream with the detective snooping around what is obviously, which is clear to me now, is Moses' workplace, his office. So this is in the observatory, and this is where Moses works, as you can see from this other shot. We have Moses working on this giant ass telescope or whatever it is. Now, I could be wrong, this could be in an entirely different area of the of the observatory, but I am 100% certain that this building, it's it's in the same place. If it's not the same room as in the previous shot, then it's definitely around the same place. Now, the next two shots aren't that interesting. It's just uh, footage from the 18-minute gameplay trailer that we saw in the reveal stream. So... 
or gameplay footage on trailer, so yeah, nothing interesting here. But what is interesting is what's coming up. And that is the Snapping Turtle Bar, and in it we get two new scenes with Max, Amanda, and Sophie. In the first scene, we see Amanda bringing Max and Sophie their drinks. So this to me, if any of you have seen the video I made before, I detailed, okay, what are scenes with Amanda, Max, and Sophie go in which order? And so this new scene actually, if you've seen the video I made where Max has a different outfits on, I put that in the compilation and said, okay, this is the first scene out of all of them. But this one is actually the new first scene. So we put that in front of the outfit scene. Which means the scene plays out like this. Now what about the second scene? What we see is that Max is with Sophie and she's holding her martini glass and then she appears, at least to me, it looks like she's sculling the martini. Now I have a pretty good idea on why she's doing this and when this scene takes place. And this scene takes place and you can tell from where Sophie is standing. This scene takes place just before the one where Max goes to walk over to talk to Amanda and Sophie is giving Max a thumbs up. So to me it looks like Max scolds the drink and she hands it to Sophie who has it. But rather than go over with Max, um, Sophie's like, no, no, you got this. You can do it. I'll just wait here. So here's how I think this is going to play out. So let's say your Max isn't in a relationship with Chloe or Chloe is dead. And basically Sophie's um, told Max that Amanda likes her and she should ask her out and maybe you're doing a playthrough where you want to romance Amanda and you're like okay and you have Max say agree but she's a bit nervous to ask her and so Max scolds the martini for Dutch courage and you can see this a lot in films when well at least older films I've watched where a guy likes a girl and he's scared and the friend's like come on what's the worst that can happen she says no and the guy's like, you know what, screw it. And he scolds, he, he takes it, he finishes his shot or his glass, and he's like, I'm going for it. And that and it can be either it can either work out in his favor or go epically wrong. But he drinks the drink, he, he scolds it for the Dutch courage. And that's what I believe is happening here. So if we play these scenes in order, then this is how it's gonna go, in my opinion. Now this could also work in the opposite direction, where if Max is in a relationship with Chloe, then she has to do the opposite, which is let Amanda know, okay, I have a girlfriend, or I'm engaged, or whatever Max and Chloe's relationship is. So Max downs the martini for Dutch Courage, and she goes up to Amanda and says, listen, you're nice, but I'm engaged, or I have a girlfriend. And she'd have to let let Amanda down gently because 
It's stated in the 18 minute gameplay footage that Suffy hardly knows anything about what Max did before coming to Colvin University. So, and she, she doesn't even know about Chloe and she has to snoop in Max's wallet to figure out who she is. So why would Amanda know anything about Max? Why would she know that Max has a girlfriend or she's engaged? She wouldn't. So Max will, So I do think that if we choose to have Max be in a relationship with Chloe, then we have to. This is a non-negotiable thing. We have to tell Amanda. So Max can't, like... Because I do not see Max cheating on Chloe with Amanda or the other romance, if it is Moses or not. It's just not the type of person she is. So, no, I do think by default, if we choose Max is in a relationship with Chloe, it locks out both the romances. Now, there's nothing really interesting here. We just get some exterior shots of the snapping turtle. But what's inside is we actually figure out two new names for the characters that are going to be in this game. And if you look to the left, you'll see there are two people talking and their names are Reggie and Diamond. We also see what appears to be Sophie sitting at a bench by herself and a small stage where I think the snapping turtle does comedy as Amanda mentioned her and her co-star Henry do comedy. So I actually made a mistake, I thought this guy was Henry as in the trailer it mentioned, um, one of the trailers Amanda mentioned her and her uh, friend Henry do stand-up, and I thought it might be this guy, but no, him, like, he, like Diamond, is a student, and they do this, um, thing, you've, like, they've done it in a previous trailer where they, um, say a sentence, and they show a scene to play, okay, this is what's happening, this is what's happening, like, um, there was one where Moses' hands, hand is shaking, and it says anxiety, and then you see him. Amanda writing something on a piece of paper, giving it to Max, and it says, Romance, and so this is how they subtly tell us these things. So these two are students, and the girl that Reggie is talking to, we've actually seen her before, and this is her right here with Max, and I believe this scene is when the uh, red and blue moon show up and then the dark clouds start coming in, but I may be wrong. Now I'm just going to take a guess, but I believe these two may or may not be on a date, or they may just be friends hanging out. I know, I can't remember the name, one person mentioned in the comment that Reggie may be a romance option, it, it makes more sense for him than Moses. But no, I don't know, he's a student, so no, unless it's some parallel creepy thing like with Victoria and Jeff Jefferson, then no. No, thank you, I will not be getting into that, if that's an option. And speaking of Victoria, her plan made no sense now that I've thought about it. Because she tries to seduce Jefferson, she's like, we could have some alone time together if I win the Everyday Hero Contest. And he's clearly not interested. And then she tries blackmailing him, saying that she he would have picked her photos for favours, implying that he was gonna let her win the everyday hero contest if she had sex with him or did sexual favors for him like if he was turning you down because he wasn't interested in you sexually how the hell is blackmail gonna work yeah yeah that's really gonna grease the wheels that's gonna get you what you want victoria like so stupid like the logic is i do like the scene where he just turns her down outright i even though like you know, we know what his character is, but yeah, it's, it, it's a good scene. I just like seeing Victoria just get completely wrecked. It's like, nah, screw you, I'm not interested. But getting back on topic, uh, we have this shot of Gwen, and we can tell that uh, she's a professor. The game lets us know, even though I thought that was pretty clear at the time. At least to me it was. Now, one thing I did notice about this scene is if you look on Max's shoulder, she's got a strap for what appears to be a bag. And if we take a look at the previous scene, well, not the previous, but a few scenes earlier, we see a person entering the turtle with um, that same strap on their shoulder. And this could very well be Max. What could be happening is she could be hanging up her coat and her bag, 
or maybe she, or maybe it happens later in the game, as she's leaving, she goes, she gets her bag, and then she runs into Gwen and starts talking to her. Now, the next scene, scenes we see Max is dancing with Amanda, they, if I had to take a guess, they're listening to that band Amanda likes, Misery Cult, and I don't know if there are other people with them, or if it's just them two at the Snapping Turtle, and they've put on, like, if you remember in Life is Strange 1, where um, Max was on the music, and her and Chloe start dancing in her room, so this could be a similar thing, it's just the two of them and the snapping turtle and they're just dancing. Now one of the things I know is if you look at Max's shirt, this is clearly from the perfect outfit pack or whatever it's called, the cat one. Now I may be wrong, but you know, who's to say that, well it makes sense to me that this cat shirt, it's a shirt with a cat face on it. and. It makes sense to me that it, it's part of the cat outfit pack. Now, as I mentioned uh, earlier, um, with Max, depending on whether she's in a relationship or not, uh, that could determine whether or not she um, tells a man that she likes her or tells her she has a girlfriend and has to turn her down. This thing could be entirely determinate, depending on that. So, if Max is in a relationship with Chloe, and she has to let Amanda down, then this scene doesn't doesn't appear to happen. Like, maybe, I'm not too sure, but um, I think they're listening with the music. You see in Amanda's ear, she's got a little earphone. Maybe Max has one in the other ear, and the two of them are listening to the Misery Cult band through that, and they're just jumping around and dancing. Now, in this scene here, we see Max and Sophie uh, watching a comedy group. Now, the guy on the left, I'm pretty sure that's Isaac, and the guy on the right, this might actually be Henry, instead of the other guy who's Reggie. So, and because if you remember, we see later in a, in one of the previous videos that was posted on the Life is Strange TikTok, Amanda mentioned she does stand up with a guy called Henry. And this right here, in the TikTok video of the names for Amanda, this could very well be her doing a show, her doing a comedy bit after Henry and Isaac, or maybe it's before, although why she has that look on her face I'm not too certain, but perhaps Max and Sophie are watching her, but uh, I don't know, what do you all think? Alright, so these next few scenes I've just pieced together because I want to talk about this singular thing, Abraxas. Now apparently Abraxas is this secret society and from what I've gathered, you have to gather clues and in the end you will uncover a secret to the university. Now, top of my head, I am thinking that this will, this will perhaps be some kind of map that will lead us to the hidden location of where Abraxas is. And Abraxas may be, um, it may be something one of the um, clubs or, or fraternities or whatever the campus has does and it says to members okay if you want to get in you have to solve this puzzle you have to find this location if you can do that it shows how smart you are and you can enter or perhaps I'm overthinking it now I do believe that as you all know in Life is Strange 1 there are a few scenarios where uh, Max has to use her powers, or she can use them to help solve puzzles. Uh, in episode 4, when you have to get into David's locker in the garage, you can use a fire extinguisher to break the lock, or you can figure out the pin and use that. When you're trying to get in Nathan's phone, you can figure out the pin number, or you can just press repeated numbers and then end up using the pu puck number, which is like eight, 8 numbers which I always do because I, for the life of me, can't remember what his password is. But I do think that with in this game, Max is going to have to travel between parallel timelines, and well, well, not parallel, but between her timeline and the parallel one, and she can use this to help solve the infant to help solve this puzzle. And I'm quite curious to know just how big of a role will, this will play. Maybe it'll just be something minor. Maybe all we'll get is an achievement. I just hope to God it's not as hard as those puzzles were in, um, I don't know if you've ever 
uh, heard of a game called The Council. Those were gruesome, my god. And you know, I don't mind puzzles, but when it's that level, like The Council, it's like, ah, oh, my head. And honestly, I hope that if when we play through the episodes, I hope like we um, don't miss a part where it's like, okay, you missed a puzzle in the previous episode, you can't figure out what this riddle is. It's like, are you shitting me? That is bullcrap. No. But as um, we'll be able to explore Colden University, perhaps we can go back like to these places in later episodes and be able to solve the puzzle. But yes, this seems very interesting. Um, I hope it doesn't, like, I don't mind hand-holding um, to an extent. Like, let's just say if I'm stuck on something for half an hour, I'm going to be like, okay, um, can you give me a hint? Like, you remember those old games where you're stuck on something and you can press a button to give you a hint? I wouldn't mind something like that. That would be a nice compromise, but I just don't want this game to hand-hold me if, if it, the puzzles are too difficult. Otherwise, what's the point? I want to feel pride in solving a puzzle. But yeah, this Abraxas group, apparently the most prestigious and established group, at least one of them in Colden University. Uh, let's see what they have to offer when we solve their puzzle. But I don't really have much to talk about this, it's just a puzzle. I'm more interested in the characters and whatnot, that's why this segment's a bit short. Uh, nothing really strikes me of interest here, just that Moses is getting candy out of that little tin. Other than that, no, n nothing really. Now this scene, I do believe, takes place, if you remember in the reveal stream, um, Max and Sophie are in an abandoned building, and Sophie ends up um, saving Max. Like, she grabs Max, she pulls her out of the way, as something was going to crush the two of them, and it looked like it was going to crush Max more than it was going to crush Sophie. So this could very well be that building. We get a nice view of Colden University, which may or may not be from the owl's point of view, but it's daytime, so I doubt that we... I doubt that the owl will be flying in the day, and unless this could just be a wide shot where um, it's just showing off the scenery and then we start playing as Max. Like, Max could be down in the corner there somewhere, and then after this, is, after this wide shot, we then go to Max. Speaking of Max, we see her here smiling. This is clearly, from the background, I can tell it's the observatory. Whether or not it's Moses' office or another part of the observatory, I have no idea. But that's definitely, she's somewhere in there. We then have a scene of, and this is where things start picking up, they start going even faster. So we see this scene of Amanda, and she gives a thumbs up, and the narrator, as these scenes are going, is like, uh, Welcome to Caldon University, where nothing bad happens at all. We then get a shot of Diamond, as I mentioned before, one of the new characters is clearly she's sitting here talking with Reggie. We then get a shot of Max and Sophie, and what's weird here is that we see Sophie has the martini glass and Max has the little shot glass. Could this be we get to choose what Max gets to drink? And that could actually change slightly change the scene with Amanda, Max, and Sophie where Max has the little shot glass and Safi will have the martini glass, perhaps. Now this is where things start getting really effing strange. We see that the um, screen it goes like and it looks like if you've ever had an old VCR tape and it screws up it does this. Or if you have an old like VCR or an old console and there's something wrong with the graphics card, like this will happen even on a computer. I've had it happen to my old one, that's why I had to get a new one a couple years ago. But yeah, we see this, something strange happens, and then we get the next shot. And we can see that her journal, it's all messed up, we don't know what's happened. But I, I have a pretty good idea of what this is. Max is going to have another nightmare sequence, because the only time we've ever seen her journal like this is in episode 5, after she finally brings Chloe back to life. And she passes out, and Chloe is ca carrying Max. Well, not carrying her, but she's lifting her up. She's helping her walk to the lighthouse. And if you look at Max's journal in the nightmare sequence, it looks a lot like this. And we can see a face. It does look like Chloe to me. 
and we see the words not again, not again, not again. And we also see on the left page there's a flower with thorns, and on the right page is a skull. Now the rose and the skull may be a reference to Chloe's tattoo, but uh, as you all know, um, after the storm destroyed Arcadia Bay, uh, Chloe redid her tattoo. She blacked most of it out and just left the little rose up there. Then again, perhaps the skull could symbolize death. What if Chloe ends up dying again in the game? And Max is like, ah, oh, not again, not again, not again. It's like, I saved her, now she's dying again. How do I stop this? What do I do? But if I've learned anything, this from the nightmare sequence is none of this is real. This is just Max's mind messing with her. Or it could be that other Max that Max interacts with before she wakes up. Could be doing this shit and just trying to mess with her other self. Whether that Max is an alternate version of Max, as she says, I'm one of the many Maxes you left behind, or is a, another part of her psyche, I don't know. That, it, that's always been up for interpretation. We then get a shot of Max lying on a bed, and she, in her left hand, she appears to be holding her necklace, which is clearly symbolic. It's very important to her, why it's so important, I don't know. Did Chloe give it to her, perhaps? Now, I'm not too sure about whether or not Chloe gave it to her or not, but let's take a look at her hands here. Now, it's a bit hard to tell, as I can't probably make this any more clearer, because the more I zoom in, the, the more unclear it gets. But, it doesn't look like Max is wearing any rings in this scene, and I'm curious as to why that is. Um, because we know that Max wears three rings, two on her right hand, one on her left. Now, I don't know if I'm seeing this right, but it looks like on her left hand, she has the ring on her index finger rather than her middle finger. Why that is, I don't know, but this picture is a bit grainy to me, it's blurry, so it's hard to properly see. But I can see on the right hand she has the two rings on, on her middle and ring finger on her right hand. Or it might be her index finger and her middle finger, I don't know. No, 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 middle finger and, and right ring finger. Now, I don't know what it is about this shot, but it seems ominous. It almost seems like a flashback. Or maybe Max is having a nightmare? Could this be a flashback and it's the last time Max and Chloe see each other? Could it be a dream she's having? Or perhaps a nightmare? I don't know. But I don't really have much to go on other than that. It's just, I don't know, it's just a bit unsettling. Not sure why. Now as these next few shots quickly dart across the screen, we hear the words you lied to me. Now, it's a bit hard for me. I can't tell who's making it out, so if any of you could let me know. It's just, a, I don't know why it is. It's a bit difficult for me to hear it. And we see Max has this sad look on her face, and there's a bit of a red light, so that may or may not be in that dark room. This is where it takes place. Not too sure. We then have this shot of the detective, and this was already in the reveal trailer. This is shortly after Sophie Stephanie's interrogating Max, or interviewing her about, not well, not interviewing her, but just questioning her about Sophie's murder. We then have this shot of a bowling ball with two pins out of its head, and I do believe right here this is the same place where Max and Sophie are almost killed. So, what they're doing exploring these ruins, I have no idea. We then get this interesting shot of a person, I have no idea who it is, but they appear to be... They, they, they've lit a lighter, and they're approaching a bin. Are they going to light the bin on fire, or chuck the lighter in the bin while it's lit? I don't know. Now, I've had a look at a few characters, and I haven't noticed any with black fingernails. Now, could this be Chloe? Could we be seeing Chloe here? Now, whoever this person is, I want you to take a look at her hands. We see that she isn't wearing any gloves, and she's got black fingernails. It might even be a he. Like, well, I don't know. 
But whoever this person is, focus on the fingernails and then look at this photo from Life is Strange 2 of Max and Chloe. We can see Chloe um, with the given the devil horn sign on on her wrist, and we see that her nails they're they're two different colors, or that might be depending on how the picture is made. But her nails they aren't black. Now let's take a look at the um, other photo that was found on the photo wall. Instead of Max, it's Chloe taking the photo. And we see that Chloe's hand is around Max, and look where her hand is, her left hand, which would be where we're looking on the right. It's over Max's shoulder, but we don't see her fingernails. Now why is that? Could it be that they're trying to, they're so desperate, like Decline is so desperate to hide Chloe, that they knew if we saw Chloe's fingernails here and that they were black, we'd be able to connect it to the previous um, previous image and be like, holy shit, that's Chloe, that, she's got the same fingernails as the chick that's got lighting the lighter, because we know Chloe smokes. Whether or not she still smokes in this, I'm not too sure. But that was something I just saw and I was like, hmm, okay, that's very interesting, I'm gonna look into it. And we know that, um, Chloe has most of her old tattoo covered up with the black, except for the rose at the top near her shoulder. So could she be painting her fingernails black to match the tattoo perhaps? I'm not too sure. But um, whether or not this is Chloe, do let me know your thoughts, and I'm going to see if I can find out who this person is. I'm going to be going through some old videos and looking at fingernails, and I'm going to see who it is. And it and whether I'm right or wrong, I'll let you know as soon as I can find out. Now this shot here is the one where Sophie grabs Max, we saw it in the trailer, and she pulls her out of the way as, as something crush I forget what it is, like this ball, me metallic big ball type thing, almost crushes them to death. So yeah, nothing new here. We then see the detective looking around, doing his job, why he doesn't ha if I was a detective I'd have a little mini torch because if I'm using a torch on my phone it's gonna waste the battery even faster I'll, like could I remember um going off tan going off like this bit of a rant but I remember um last Christmas I like, I had to work 26th or 27th of December and the power where I was working cut out and we had to work in the dark dark for like five to six hours and it was fine when the sun was out, but as it started getting dark, we had to use the torches on our phones, and it was it was brutal. But yeah, um, I can tell it's also the detective in the next scene based on the sleeve here, which you'll see. So you can tell there by the by the, his near his wrist, the sleeves, uh, what he's wearing. It's the detective. I'm 100% sure he has the gun on Max, and we can see Moses' arm in the background. We know he's there. Now originally I thought this was Lucas's briefcase, but after having a look at the previous scene, it's not, it's too different. But whatever it is, it's very important and to the detective it might be evidence and if in if you're a detective and you see a suspect trying to get rid of evidence, obviously you're gonna pull a gun on them and say, freeze, don't move, I'm not gonna let you destroy the evidence. Like drop it to the floor. Which makes more sense. You know, because I don't see I don't see him threatening Max like he's gonna kill Max or Moses. He's just doing his job because, as I've mentioned before, from his point of view, Max is the most likely suspect. So obviously he's gonna be investigating her and anyone connected to her to see if Max was acting alone. Like he might even think Moses is an accomplice too. And in the ESBR rating, it mentions someone gets shot in the shoulder. This could be that scene where um, the detective shoots Moses. But, like, by, I don't think, like, tries to kill him, but maybe Moses tries to, like, um, distract the detective, or maybe tackles him to the ground. It's like, Max, run, and then he ends up getting shot or something. I don't know. Or maybe Max and Moses decide to make a run for it instead of stopping, and Moses gets shot that way. Now this next message is from Max's parents, and it is very weird. It says, Max, we can't wait for you to come home this summer. We're sure Blackwell Academy is great and all, but we miss you. First of all, it's 
been a decade, so Max is no longer going to Blackwell Academy. Secondly, if you chose to save Chloe, there is no Blackwell Academy, it's all gone. So what is happening here? Could this be part of the nightmare sequence? Could Max's powers, when she created a new reality, she also uses her powers, like it, her powers start going on the fritz, and she mixes both her time and reality powers together to create an ultimate, alternate timeline where she's back at Blackwell Academy. That is creepy if her powers are on the fritz, like, because we know in the nightmare sequence, if you remember when she's in the dark room, we see alternate version, we see versions of Jefferson, Victoria, Chloe, Nathan, Warren, and they're shifting back and forth. Like, could could Max's power do, do something like that, where she shifts between alternate realities, like in the comic? Could, instead of just shifting between alternate realities, her time powers and her power over time, which she doesn't have anymore, maybe that starts coming back, and she's just messing up, she's traveling back and forth, back and forth. Could we possibly play as a kid Max again? Well, I don't know, but this is, this seems very weird, and it just gets even weirder later on. Now, there's nothing interesting here, we've already seen this in the trailer, so don't really need to go over it. Now, this looks like, to me, it's the rooftop that Moses, Max, and Safi were on, but it's at a later date and time. Like, perhaps this could be the alternate timeline where it's just Max and Safi on the roof. Could, it ju could Max and Moses just be up there by themselves? Or could all three of them be up there and it's in the um, alternate timeline? And, like, I don't know, I just don't really have much to say at this point. I can only see two chairs at chairs right now, so I'm guessing only two people are up there, but the third chair may be out of the shot. Now, this next shot is very, very strange. We see what appears to be a butterfly and smoke. And what is happening, I have no idea. It appears what we see here is like a door handle. So, could this be Chloe in the dark? Why she would be in the dark, I don't know. Could this be part of the nightmare sequence and Max's tripping balls? I, I have no idea. But very interesting that they're leaving all this subtle stuff about Chloe and they don't even want to show her in the game. Because, like, one of two things, if she isn't in the game, then Deck Knight knows players are going to revolt. But if she's in the game, like, at least give us a little bit. We, we got the photo, but that's it. Come on, I want to see a shot of her and Max standing. At, at least show, let me see them standing together in the same room. So that way I'm like, okay, yes. She's going to be in the game. Quit, quit twisting my nipples with all this teasing bullshit. We then have this shot of Moses, and if you look at his left shoulder, it's red. So clearly right here, he's been shot. I believe the detective shot him, and um, we need a bit more context as to why he shot him, but my guess is that Max and Moses didn't listen to him. They were running, and to stop them, he's like, I'm warning you, don't make me shoot, and then he shoots and Moses gets shot. Or maybe Moses pushes Max out of the way as he was going to shoot Max and then ends up shooting Moses. But yeah, this is not looking good. We then have a shot of Max looking sad. Not sure what she's sad about, but this could this could be shortly after Sophie's death. We then get a shot of this skull, and this may be the same skull from Max's Nightmare Journal. Possibly, possibly not. I don't know, but I'm pretty sure this is in the museum. We then have a shot of Max, her index finger is bloody, clearly she's having a nosebleed. But it looks like she's sitting down somewhere, could this be after she first uses her powers? And perhaps, if I'm looking at the table right, maybe this is um, where Sophie, where she brought Sophie back to life. And Sophie and Max is sitting at the table next to Sophie's mother, and Sophie's across from her. And the two are talking, and then Max's nose starts to bleed, and um, Sophie's like, Oh, Max, your nose, you okay? 
And if we take a look at that scene, right underneath the dialogue options, you see that there is a piece of paper on the table near Sophie. And then when we shift to Max's point of view, we can see that that paper is still there. It's further away from Max because it's closer to Sophie. And so this is, I'm 100% on board that um, Sophie is going to notice like, oh shit, Max, your nose is bleeding. And then Max is going to look down and she's going to realize, okay, her powers are doing this. Like, she's getting these nosebleeds. She knows what's going to happen if she overuses her power. She's going to pass out, possibly have visions. And I do believe this isn't the first time it's going to happen. It's going to be happening multiple times. We actually, there's a, we have a screenshot of where her nose was bleeding again when she's holding a hockey stick. And Moses is standing right, be right behind her. And this could be, I think, shortly after he gets shot. That's why Max's head is in front of his left shoulder, as we saw in the previous shot, or well, a few shots ago. Moses, he has a bullet wound in his left shoulder, and that's... Max's head is covering that. This is clearly a strategic move by, by Deck Knight, as they don't want to reveal too much. Okay, now see this clock? There is this interesting theory I found on Reddit, on Nihilus Stylus' uh, Reddit page, and he mentioned in the comments, um, someone said that this clock, this could be the clock from Jefferson's classroom, and that is freaky. You see that, can you imagine Max, the powers get screwed up, and we jump back immediately to where the first game picked up, with Jefferson giving that lecture and saying how he can frame anyone in a dark corner and capture them in a moment of despair. That would be crazy, because the clock does, if you take a look at Jefferson's uh, clock in the classroom, it does look pretty similar. But then again, they could just be use, reusing an old asset, so there's always that. Or this could be part of, this could be one of the clocks in Holden University. So, as interesting as that theory is, I'm gonna take this one with a grain of salt. I don't see Max literally jumping back to the day when she discovered her powers in Blackwell. I do think that the nightmare sequences, whatever they, they are, they're going to be trippy as hell, even more so than Life is Strange 1, but this, for me, seems a bit of a stretch, but who knows, I could be wrong, if, if I am wrong, you know, I'll address it, I'll say, okay, I was wrong, I admit that, but yeah, if this is true, then wow, holy crap, what's going to happen, and maybe even things could be completely different, who's to say that because there were hints, there were hints that Rachel Amber may return in this game. How? This could be how. Maybe Max's powers go on the fritz so much she jumps between realities, like in the comics, and she ends up in a timeline where she attends Blackwell Academy with Chloe and Rachel. That would be. Uh, I, I know that fans would go wild to see the three of them together, even if it's just for a short time. We then get a shot of this dark room, whether or not it's Max's or not. And I just want to point out the screaming. I have no idea who's screaming, but uh, if any of you want to take a guess, let me know. Because I still don't know if it's Max's voice saying, you lied to me. Or, or perhaps the person that said you lied to me is the one also screaming. So if you, know, if you think you know who it is, let me know. We then get this shot of Max just walking through the snow, and she looks behind her. Perhaps someone's following her or something, I don't know. Um, this does look similar to the place where it could be around the area where Safi was shot. I don't think it's the exact same place, but it just looks eerily similar. And you can see what Max is wearing. She's not wearing a beanie, so what's going on? What's this about? Because we've always seen her when she's out in the cold. She has a beanie on, but not here. Something fishy's going on. We then get a shot of Max sitting in the Shattered Turtle, and if you look at the right, underneath the letter R, we can see Amanda there. And if we zoom up, uh, let's zoom up, she is wearing that same jacket that we see um, that she wears when she and Max are walking, uh, walking around Coldon University. So clearly, that scene, along with this one, takes place at the same time, or shortly afterwards, like, 
Max will be sitting in the Shattered Turtle, and then um, Amanda's working a shift and she finishes, and then her and Max go for a walk and they just talk. Or perhaps um, like Amanda's on a break and she decides to talk with Max, or maybe the two of them are even going on a date, or, or it could be that scene it, with the two of them dancing together, that could happen and then the next day they just go for a walk and talk about it and said, yeah, I had a great time, we should do it again sometime. That is if Max and decides to pursue a relationship with Amanda. So if the screen goes blurry here just for a few seconds like it, di like it did previously and then it ends with Max and Sophie just w looking at Cold On City and the sunset is happening. I believe the golden hour is what, what Max called it when she was talking to Chloe in the first episode at the lighthouse, I'm not too sure. but. Yeah, there's Max and Sophie, and that's really all I got to discuss here, and i got to be honest, I was not expecting this video to be as long, I was thinking I might get to the 40 minute mark, but, uh, god damn. Well, anyway, anyways, that's everything I saw and noticed, and clearly, now obviously, I'm not an expert, there is going to be stuff I missed, like that clock, like Jefferson's clock, possibly his clock and how Max could end up back in the events of the first game. Like, I don't know, could that be true, could that not be true? But I do plan to look into this stuff even more, try and figure out who the girl with the black fingernails is, and I'll get back to you all as soon as I can. I really do hope you all enjoyed this video, this is my longest Life is Strange video I've ever made that hasn't been a walkthrough, walkthrough of, the, of one of the games. But anyways, I do hope you enjoyed this, let me know what you think in the comments below, and if you noticed anything, by all means, let me know. This is Tailgame Junkie, signing off.